Elizabeth Hansen wakes up in a restraining sack. The girl is strapped down with incomprehensible bed-like devices. Elizabeth tries to breathe, but the cocoon on her face prevents her from doing so. With all her might, she tears that fabric and restores her breathing. The same thing she tries to do with other parts of her body, too. Elizabeth can't understand her location and the reason for being in an unknown space that looks like a cryogenic chamber. She manages to pull a tube out of her hand, to which she was strapped. On her head was worn a thing that looked like a helmet, but all in a glowing abyss, reading information. As soon as Liz manages to remove the helmet, the bag releases the girl. Having already released her body, she realizes that she cannot get out, for she is as if in a locked coffin. Just as she begins to call for help, a light comes on in the unknown space. The girl hears the voice of Milo, the medical interface, the personal operator who monitors all of Elizabeth's sensors and vitals. However, the girl does not understand anything and only wants to get out. At this time, the oxygen level in the cell is 35%. The Milo thinks that the girl is too excited and needs to be sedated. Elizabeth recalls some incomprehensible memories, like a gurney carrying a girl to the hospital. She begins to call out for help over and over again. Milo reports that her oxygen levels are decreasing. The more she panics, the less chance she has of surviving. Elizabeth's camera is broken, and special authorized people are informed of this. The girl and the cameraman get no response to the rescue. Milo cannot open the camera without the authorization code. Elizabeth does not have the right code, but the camera voice is only programmed to answer questions. Elizabeth begins to have an attack of claustrophobia. She tries to remember something, normalize her breathing, and calm down. Milo calls the patient Omicron 267, who is undergoing cryogenic resuscitation. The operator can call the numbers and Elizabeth decides that the police will help her. Already during the call, she can't say anything. The girl says she is in a cryogenic chamber, but she can't remember personal information. The woman gives the serial number of the unit and asks to be found, but the police can't trace her whereabouts. This is only possible if she is underground. Milo takes a DNA sample and finally answers the woman's questions by giving her name, Elizabeth Hansen. As here the girl's musings are interrupted by a call from the head of state-of-the-art technology at the police department, trying to help her. First of all, the man is interested in the level of oxygen in his cryogenic chamber. It remains at an economical consumption of 72 minutes. The manufacturer of the camera noted that with this serial number, the camera was destroyed three years ago. Elizabeth Hansen gets hysterical and her blood pressure rises. Milo reports that she is not ill and the girl's life expectancy is 82 years. She loses contact with the police. This causes the oxygen level to drop, which causes a syringe to leave the device, which attempts to inject the woman with a lethal drug. The oxygen levels drop at a frantic rate. At this time, Elizabeth tries to remember her own life. Trying to find out information about herself, Milo provides the woman with articles from the press and social media. From there, she learns that she studies cryogenics and has a husband, Leo Ferguson, whom she sees in photos from the newspapers. Elizabeth's mind immediately flashes back to her memories, and she tries to call her husband through the camera. An unknown woman picks up the phone, which does not help Elizabeth in any way. She tries to find a way out. Unbeknownst to her, a white rat comes out of nowhere, and memories reappear in the woman's mind. Milo offers Elizabeth a sedative, after which a siren appears, which she manages to break from the machine. She uses it to get grains of earth between the camera particles, but the device prevents an attempted break-in and electrocutes the woman. She begins to panic again, and her oxygen levels drop. At this time, a policeman calls and tells her that they have found Elizabeth and are on their way to release her. Unknown memories keep popping up in her head. The man asks her to calm down and focus on her body. Elizabeth finds a syringe of sedative and cuts her arm open. Thereafter, the girl remembers her husband again. A clinic that has something to do with him appears before her eyes. As soon as the woman tells the police officer about her husband, he is surprised because according to the information, she has never been married. Elizabeth begins to consider herself a psychopath for she has indeed seen the man in the photo. Opening the newspaper again, she is surprised because there is no man beside her. It turns out that the woman she was talking to is not real. These are just the images her brain creates for protection, to help Elizabeth survive, the man tells her. He also begins to describe all the information about the woman's life that he was able to learn. She was born in Stockholm, raised by her mother herself, and moved to Paris as a child. In France, Elizabeth graduated in engineering and then went to Oxford, where she played basketball professionally. The sport gave the girl many different awards, but Elizabeth doesn't remember any of them. The thoughts in her head seem more real than what the man says. She sees her husband's death again, and the gurney driving the hospital. The woman rejects all of the policeman's calls. 
Milo turns on the last 30 seconds of the conversation, where the girl hears the man talking. As she listens, she realizes that someone is dictating to the so-called policeman what to say. The next call she takes, the operator turns out to be a woman who didn't want to talk before. The stranger knows that there is a cremation cell in Elizabeth and confirms memories of her husband's death. The woman knows the codes, though she warns Elizabeth of the danger of entering them to open the cell. With the named code, Elizabeth wants to open the chamber, but the unknown woman manages to assure the error of that decision. The woman dictates what to do to survive and get out of the cell. Having done everything necessary, gravity disappears and Elizabeth takes off. She is in space and 68,000 kilometers to Earth. An unknown woman tries to explain the whole situation to Elizabeth. It turns out that the girl has been put into hypersleep for the task of colonizing a planet that circles the star Wolf. The flying ship took off recently and did not have time to create nuclear impulse propulsion. That's why there was an error that led to the woman being taken out of her sleep. A stranger tries to help, for she turns out to be the creator of the device. Elizabeth recalls that she works for the Department of Defense, and everything that happens is necessary because humanity could be extinct in a few generations. When the police start looking for Elizabeth Hansen, the ministry immediately intervenes. It turned out that it was not a policeman who spoke to her, but an official who knew the reality. He could not say anything because it was impossible to predict the woman's reaction. If she had called the wrong person and told everything she remembered, it could have sown panic all over the world. The policeman decided to lie about her husband just to stall for time until the oxygen ran out. Mankind was being killed by a virus. Elizabeth Hansen had been in hypersleep for 12 years. After calming down, Elizabeth Hansen begins to listen to the woman to restore an activity of the camera. The device broke down due to an overheated process responsible for preventing brain atrophy. Elizabeth tries to restore the camera's activity. At this time, the creator of the device receives unknown messages and Elizabeth Hansen loses contact with her. The only thing the stranger manages to say is that Elizabeth must find the necessary information in her own head before the oxygen level drops. Otherwise, the girl simply will not survive. Milo gives the information, after which the woman realizes that she did this to herself. Pressing on the wound, Elizabeth gets some kind of memory, but it's not enough. The woman does whatever is necessary to get the camera to electrocute her. She recalls how L.A.O. Ferguson died. Elizabeth calls her mother and is already saying goodbye to her. The girl decides to open the camera and die in order to be reunited with her husband. As the countdown progresses, Elizabeth realizes how to make things right. Milo informs her that there are about 10,000 of these cameras and the nearest device is 53 meters away. The personal operator at the woman's direction opens the image and turns off the filtering. Now, the girl sees many of the same cameras and as many bodies of people who have already opened the cameras and died. The Milo reports that Elizabeth's camera is lost in his system. It happened as a result of a collision with an asteroid. The woman also knows that Leo Ferguson is also in one of the cameras. The husband is alive. Elizabeth was lied to. In one science conference video, one rat went through a maze while performing electrical experiments on a new clone. She knows how to go through the maze, even though he is in it for the first time. Thoughts are confused because Elizabeth looks old enough. Omicron 267 is only the clone body of Elizabeth Hansen. The woman who helped her is only after many years. Omicrons are uninfected human clones to colonize another planet. After this information, young Elizabeth Hansen becomes hysterical. She is only a stupid clone and her whole life is just a camera. She has the same memories as the real Elizabeth Hansen. The girl records messages for her clone husband. At this time, the oxygen level drops to the most dangerous point and the alarm and countdown go off. In a few seconds, Elizabeth Hansen would be put into eternal sleep, but she prevented euthanasia and disabled the processor, which was responsible for death by contingency. Now Elizabeth could resume the camera, but she herself had disconnected all sensors. Having normalized her state of mind, the woman attaches her body back to the sensors. At this time, the oxygen level drops to 1%. Milo reports that there is no possibility of survival. It occurs to Liz that there may still be oxygen in the broken cells and it can be transferred to her cell. Asking the operator to do this, he reports that Omicron 267 must be injected into the hypersleep. Milo performs the operation. Elizabeth Hansen moves into hypersleep. While this is happening, Milo talks about the planet they are to arrive on. A cocoon is once again created around the body of Elizabeth Hansen. The ship picks up hyperlight speed, and after a while, we see Elizabeth and her husband reunited on a new planet. 